1-800-EVERY-ROOM OEM wheels with a massive inventory, we buy and sell reconditioned, new takeoff, and used OEM replacement wheels, all backed by over 150 years of combined experience. Text pictures to 951-RIM-TEXT or visit us online at 1-800-EVERY-ROOM.COM. kind of out here in the sticks of North Carolina right now. There's a blackwood over here that I want to take a look at and see what kind of condition it is. See if it's something that we might be able to use for what we're looking for. And there it is. There's a blackwood for sale right here. Hmm. Well, see what we got here to work with. Lincoln Blackwood. One year truck. Only made it for 2002. Oddball truck, only 3,300 of these were made. Let me introduce you to the Blackwood. The 2002 Lincoln Blackwood is one of the rarest and shortest produced models ever in Lincoln's history. This luxury vehicle is derived from the Ford F-150 Super Crew and the Lincoln Navigator. The Blackwood was intended to combine the utility of a truck-based vehicle with the comfort of a sedan. But the question is, do Americans really need, or should they want, a gilded pick-em-up truck? Replacing the F-Series pickup bed with a rear cargo bed that was repurposed as a watertight trunk that adopted a permanently mounted, power-operated tonneau cover opening above a 50-50 hinged Dutch-style door instead of a traditional drop-down tailgate. The exterior of the cargo bed was styled with imitation black, African winge wood, with aluminum strike inlays, making it the first woody Ford Motor Company vehicle since the LTD Country Squire and the Colony Park station wagons. The Blackwood concept vehicle was introduced at the 1999 North American International Auto Show and was named the ultimate utility vehicle by Ford. The concept vehicle was met with nearly universal approval by the public and it was approved for production shortly after its display. For a lower ride height, four-wheel drive was not an option, unlike the Navigator. Also, the 19-inch wheels were downsized to 18 inches. The cargo bed was produced using screen laminate composite panels, replacing the 20 square feet of expensive wood used in the concept vehicle. The Blackwood was fitted with an Intec 4-valve 5.4-liter V8, producing 300 horsepower, borrowed from the Lincoln Navigator and paired with a four-speed automatic transmission. The interior of the Blackwood cargo area was fully carpeted, lined in polished aluminum, and lit with LED lighting. The model line uses a four-seat configuration, placing a large center console between the two rear seats. All four seats were upholstered in Connolly leather. Yes, the same company that Binley and Aston Martin use, with heating and cooling for both front seats. To align with the nameplate, the only color offered was Gunslinger Black. Remember the old phrase, hey, you can get it in any color as long as it's black. And of course, it had a black interior. The model line was equipped with nearly every available Lincoln feature standard, including a sunroof, premium Alpine sound system, and a multi-zone automatic climate control. Only one option was offered for the Blackwood, a vehicle telematic system, which added a voice-activated cellular phone and a GPS navigation system at a price of nearly 2000 bucks. For the 2001 Neiman Marcus Spring Catalog, Lincoln built a special edition of 50 Neiman Marcus Edition Blackwoods. While sharing the same exterior as a standard Blackwood, several upgrades were made to the interior, including Neiman Marcus logo embroidered headrest and a modified rear console that served as a cooler or warming compartment and included a 7-inch widescreen DVD player with wireless headphones. Amazingly, it sold out in less than 24 hours after its release, even with its $6,300 price increase. 
After the 2002 model year, Lincoln ended sales of the Blackwood in the United States, with all 2003 production of the model line sold in Mexico. The final Lincoln Blackwood rolled off the assembly line in December of 2002, 15 months after its entry into production. Lincoln planned to cap the sales at 10,000 units, but that proved really not necessary, as sales only reached 3,356 by the time Lincoln pulled the plug. The Blackwood's base price of $52,500, which is roughly $80,000 in today's money, didn't help matters either. The uselessness of the bed was its real killer, though. The Escalade EXT was killing it because of the versatility of its mid-gate bed system. Lincoln didn't seem to realize that no one wanted a truck bed that was essentially a massive trunk. Introduced along the Blackwood for 2002, the Cadillac EXT outsold the Blackwood more than 4 to 1. The irony of driving a Ford product on the Lincoln Highway will hopefully raise a few eyebrows, considering Henry Ford's position on the building of the Lincoln Highway. As you watch this season, I'll be sure to drop some hints so you can figure out the irony as well. Despite its short production run, the Lincoln Blackwood left a lasting impression on the luxury pickup truck segment. It was a pioneer in its class, offering a unique combination of a luxury and utility that few other vehicles could match. was that tires with the low tread the old dry rod and crack tires from sitting in the sun so we've got a brand new set of continental tires and we got some brand new rims from 1-800 every rim these rims were really hard to find and i wanted to keep a stock look on this blackwood they were able to come through and find me a set which <laughs> really was a challenge. So I'm gonna go through the installation of a tire for you, show you how some, maybe some tips and some tricks uh, that you didn't know about installation of tires and rims and balancing as well. So we're gonna get into that next. Nice touch, got some new center caps too. Let's install our tire valve stem. See I'm using the Coats Max machine and I don't want the gooseneck to actually hit the rim so I don't scratch anything and use my adjuster here this is my stop see I'm not hitting the rim right now so now as my tire spins around I'm not going to be contacting and scratching this brand new rim so I've got that set up where I want grab a tire now got some brand new Continentals going on these rims before you install a tire you want to lube the beads the quality tire lubricant as to not damage the new tire. So you see, I'm gonna set that down there. I'm gonna slide the arm back over. And you'll see I've kind of got this tire at an angle like this. We're gonna walk it down. There it goes. Second part of this tire installation is keeping tucked in over here, but on top over here. And we're gonna walk it around. Now the tire's installed. Now one of the things that people ask a lot about or don't understand is what are these dots on the sidewall? A lot of your new tires will come with dots on them, maybe a yellow or a red. This is the actual point where the manufacturer has identified probably the highest point of that tire. That means I want to line this tire up with my valve stem. If I can get it spin a little bit. 
So if you see red or yellow, or in this case, blue, the one thing to remember is red rules. So red, line that up with your valve stem. Again, no tires, perfectly balanced. No rim is perfectly balanced, but trying to identify the highest point and matching it with my valve stem hole is a good starting point. Remember, as you air your tire up, never exceed 40 pounds while seating these beads. Another really nice thing that I like about Continental tires is you see how they have this rim guard built into their tire. This protects that rim from any damage. Remember, set your tires to the manufacturer of the vehicle's recommended specifications for the best ride and comfort. The engineers have designed it that way. Don't use the sidewall of the tire to tell you how much air to put in it. My Blackwood only wants 32 PSI. But if you look at the sidewall, it says it can handle 44 PSI. Now, if you took it up to 44 PSI, can the tire itself handle it? Yes. But you're gonna sacrifice ride quality. Well, some will say, well, maybe I'll get better fuel efficiency or better fuel mileage. Maybe, but again, it's that give and take. What are you giving up? You're giving up comfort. And in a Lincoln pickup truck, I prefer comfort. So I'm just gonna stick with what Lincoln says and that's 32 PSI. So this tire is all set. I can take it off my machine and walk it over to the tire balancer. First thing you wanna do is identify the collet you need. And you can see that one fits. It's a good fit in there. I'm gonna slide that on here. So by moving this arm out here on the inside, gotta love new technology, automatically measures how far we are away from here. And now it's also telling me to go ahead and lower the hood. If you had any old wheel weights, you'd wanna remove those first, but obviously I have a new rim. So now it's telling me I need an ounce and a quarter on the outside of the rim and nothing on the inboard of the rim. Now with this being a Lincoln, I don't want wheel weights on the outside of my rim. I'm gonna hide those with some tape weights instead on the inside of the wheel. Since I'm using tape weights, I'm gonna clean the inside of the rim. Make sure there's nothing there that would cause the weights to fall off. It's asking for two ounces of weight. Got a nice little laser that's telling me exactly where to put it too. And that's exactly what you wanna see. So I've got three more to mountain balance so we can hit the Lincoln Highway on the road to Apex.